Welcome to Model Steam Engines Top Tip Time Part 29. In this episode I'm showing how to make an internal heat shield for a Stuart 504 boiler. To some people this may appear to be quite over the top and I suppose it is really, but this heat shield really did make a difference to the steaming of this boiler. The outer panels of the boiler hardly got hot at all. This episode is really about simple fabrication, using nuts and bolts instead of welding. I hope you enjoy it and learn something. These pieces of stainless steel are perfect for the job, but they've been cut using a guillotine, and this leaves sharp edges on them. The first thing to do is to remove the sharp edges on the belt sander. And this really is a health and safety warning, these edges can be very sharp, so always remove them before starting work. And here they are after the edges have been removed and you could not cut yourself on these at all, even if you tried. Although thinking about that, if I hit myself smartly in the face with one of the corners, that would probably cause some damage, but I'm not going to do that. I'm making a heat shield for a model steam engine boiler. And pain and suffering is generally not part of the job. So why am I making a heat shield? Well, have a look at this. This is from one steaming, and you can see the amount of heat that the sides have been subjected to. None of it got through to the paint, because I used a double layer of heat insulation, but by fitting this heat shield, it will be a real belt and braces approach, plus the burner will be properly supported. I once built a Stuart 504 boiler plant, which had an original 504 boiler spirit burner, but in no time at all, the baseboard that the spirit burner sat on became very badly burnt. So to prevent that happening again, I'm going to use a controllable gas burner, and to stop the gas burner from cremating the baseboard, I'm fitting a separate floor in the bottom of the boiler using one of the pieces of stainless steel. Then the other two pieces of stainless steel will be mounted vertically on this floor panel as an extra pair of heat shields and heat reflectors. I'm going to use some brass angle to mount the reflectors inside the boiler, but I'm also going to use some of this brass angle to make some feet so I can fasten the boiler down to the baseboard. As far as I'm aware, later models of the 504 series boiler had cast-in mounting feet, but I think this is an earlier model. The first thing to do is to make sure that the floor fits perfectly in the boiler. This clip shows me using a felt-tip pen to mark out the position for the two pieces of brass angle that will support the upright panels. Beginners, and as a beginner, it is very important to educate your eye. It is of course possible to achieve very accurate drilling of these parts, but it is so over the top for what this part's going to do, it's perfectly fine doing it this way. This is not always the case, sometimes it is very important to make sure the holes are 100% accurate, but in this case it's not necessary. This is a piece of brass that's been drilled, which is going to be riveted to the floor of a gas burner mounting in a model steam engine boiler. It is not a high precision part. It's not part of a satellite, and it's not part of an intercontinental ballistic missile guidance system. But please do not take this the wrong way. What I'm saying is you can't just drill the holes in any old place in the brass. They have to be accurately drilled, but not down to the last micron. As I said earlier, from a beginner's point of view, it is very important that you learn how to calibrate your eye. This takes considerable practice. I've been doing this for quite a lot of years, so I can make a felt-tip pen mark and drill holes thereupon, and the parts are more than accurate enough, and here they are, and I've written on them. On the brass angle, I've written base R and base L, that's base right and base left, and on the stainless steel mounting plate, I've just written L and R for left and right. What I'm doing at the moment is just making a mark on the metal plate. And once I've made the mark, I drill it all the way through in the drilling machine and pop a rivet in there. Then I make a mark through the hole with the Minicraft drill at the other end as well. This ensures that the brass angle is perfectly parallel to the edge of the plate. Before I permanently fix this brass angle in place though, I have to drill some more holes in it. And I'm doing this freehand. Remember what I said about the calibrated eye? I'm just putting a felt tip pen mark in between the holes on the other side of the angle. By using a couple of rivets to align the parts, I can then drill the holes all the way through the steel plate using the brass angle as a guide. I riveted the brass angle using eight rivets to the stainless steel plate, and now I'm using a needle file to mark the position of the uprights. Quite simple. 
The next step is to mark the two vertical plates with an L or an R so I know which side they fit. You will notice the use of some spring clamps to temporarily hold them in place while I mark them out. It's quite important to make sure that this side panel does not move whilst the marking out procedure is underway. And the same of course applies to the other side panel. The next part of the job is to find out where to put the gas burner on the base plate. When I measure the part of the boiler that is inside the main housing, it's about 9 inches long. So I'm going to fit the burner in this position. This is just about in the middle of the plate. I'm going to fit some guides that the main burner body will slide into. But before I do that, I'm going to take some time to thread the holes in the brass angle. This is a 4BA tap and as you can see it goes into the brass very easily. So now I'm fitting the guide rails for the burner and what I'm using are some 8BA bolts. In this clip you can clearly see me using one of my small Barco spanners to hold the brass nuts in place while I screw in the 8BA bolts. And why am I using 8BA stainless steel bolts? Because I have lots of them. I bought a big pot full many years ago. The burner's a little bit tight so what I have to do is just tap the rails with a hammer like this, very gently. I don't normally use a hammer on things, but I had to do this just to move the guides out a little bit to make the burner a tight fit between the guides. As I don't want the burner to move out of position, I'm putting an end stop in place. And all this is, is another piece of drilled angle. I'm marking out the positions for it. Then I just drill the holes in the base plate, countersink the holes in the base plate and screw in some more 8BA bolts. Once again using my incredibly useful small Barco spanner to grip the nuts on the other side. And now if I slide the burner into position it stays where it's put, watch, even upside down. This clip shows me fitting one of the side plates to the brass angle and as you can see all of the 4BA bolts are screwing perfectly and I didn't have to file any of the holes or move their position. So there really is a lot to be said for working on the calibrated eye. Get plenty of practice in and very soon you'll be able to do this. Just use a felt tip pen mark and follow through with a drill and everything fits together. I would however like to take this opportunity to say that if you are a beginner to metal work in general, you may find that it doesn't quite work out like this and you may have to use a needle file to elongate the holes in the steel plate to make it fit the holes that you've drilled in the brass angle. And that concludes this episode of Top Tip Time. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.